hi good afternoon i think uh, you're staying safe in uh, your homes because of this lockdown i need to address uh, you people uh, regarding uh, the major project let me uh, give you some uh, brief idea how to utilize this time to bring out some good uh, say improvements or say uh, updates in a major project i hope you can uh, use this uh, time uh, effectively in preparing uh, your uh, reports and your uh, presentations and keep it ready for uh, reviews which might happen uh, any time uh, after the lockdown or in between uh, via online meetings and so on generally uh, a btech major project report has uh, say different uh, sub chapters like uh, introduction literature review uh methodology results and discussion conclusions and uh, references at the end so these different chapters give you different information uh, say you have to present it in such a way that your uh, report is appealing to the readers the introduction part will give introduction to the project and literature survey will tell you uh how the say advances happened in the given uh, area of research and then methodology uh, will uh, say inform uh, how the project was done and results some discussion what new things or uh, say infer from the uh, say you know, project work and conclusions the major conclusions drawn from the say project which you have done and references which you have referred in your uh, whole project work maybe uh, say major part comes from uh, your literature and say citation from uh, your results and discussions and then you can have some uh, specific outcomes at the end the introduction chapter can have some basic introduction about the subject or area of research then go into your uh, specific subject area and then finally into your topic you can describe about the physics and you can uh, have some citation from uh, literature you can use say pictures that describe your project very well and you can uh, say uh, use uh, say information from uh, say any other sources but uh, you have to remember you have to give due citations like mentioning that source the picture is taken from so and so website or so and so paper uh authored by this person this is the paper title uh, journal volume number year and so on so don't uh, just copy paste but uh, what you can do is you can digest the information and you can present it in a uh, say coherent way and then you can use uh, so pictures available online and you can uh, cite it appropriately such that uh, there is uh, no problem of plagiarism and this introduction sequence it can start from a historical perspective and then slowly you can move into your exact work you can mention about the different ways of study like example you might have a, say a theoretical study or experimental study or computational study you can mention uh, all uh, say basic information about this and you can specifically give importance to what is the methodology you have adapted for your project work at the end of the introduction chapter you can say that uh say from the given background we are focusing on this particular work in this particular area and hence we have some uh, literature survey which will be uh, given in the subsequent chapter and this last uh, few lines will be a linkage uh, from uh, uh, say the first chapter introduction to the second chapter literature review in literature review i think you can start with basic uh, say information about uh, uh, literature uh, that starts from uh, say 1950s maybe 50 or 60 years will be a better time period or span uh, for you to focus on literature uh, you can uh, say find literatures from uh, different sources like science direct wiley awa asme ace and so on you can gather the information and you can digest the information and then you can pass it in literature only thing is you should not plagiarize the information or you can you cannot uh, say copy the information from uh, literatures but you can uh, infer uh, material and then you can write it on your own
okay there are uh, different uh, types of uh, literature surveys uh, and i will tell you a few types like uh, you take a paper and you digest the material and you write uh, information about it and then move on to next paper you digest some material and then you write about it and so on you do for multiple papers you find uh, say uh, uh, different paragraphs each paragraph will speak only about a paper this is one type of literature survey but this is very rudimentary there are other types of literature surveys which is a coherent literature survey most uh, people uh, find it uh, difficult to do like uh, i will give an uh, analogy then you will understand this uh, if i ask you to write about uh, say a survey on uh, cricket players especially indian cricket players uh, you might start uh, writing that uh, say about uh, a particular person and then you will describe about him then you move to the next person you describe about him then and so on maybe a uh, love and players in a squad and so on but uh, if you want to write it in a coherent way what you can do is uh, the squad is uh, for love and players and these many people are batsmen you can put citations uh, then you can move on to these many people are bowlers and uh, say mention their citations and then uh, again uh, fielding you can mention some citations then move on into subtopic and uh, you can say that uh, the physical appearance of these people are this and you can mention these people are tall these people are medium height and so on then you can uh, speak about only batting performances you can group players in that particular uh, say aspect and then you can group uh, people uh, and say about their bowling performances fielding performances and so on so each uh, say performance will be a subdivision in your uh, say survey similarly in literature what you can do is uh, you have to read your literature thoroughly and uh, individual papers you find uh, different subtopics and then uh, you have to digest the material now you find uh, what are the subtopics you want to discuss in your uh, particular project and then you take the subtopic in that particular subtopic how different authors have done different uh, say uh, inferences or uh, say uh, what all they have got from their uh, projects or uh, say their papers and then you can uh, consolidate the material and you can uh, say put that material into that particular subtopic and this is like uh, say digested information from multiple papers in a particular paragraph under a subtopic so if you read the subtopic you might find that these are the particular uh, ways with which this particular uh, say uh, topic has been studied and you might find uh, these many people done uh, similar work uh, say you might find a deviation in work you might find results uh, going well together and you might find results contradicting each other so you will get a overall idea about that particular subtopic similarly you can find multiple subtopics and you can present a coherent literature at the end of literature you will be able to say uh, list out what are the voids in the literature and then you can uh, define the scope objective of your work and uh, how you are going to say uh, address that and the methodologies can be referred to the next chapter chapter 3 is uh, your methodology in methodology you can start with a brief introduction why you want to present the material here and then uh, you speak about what are the different methodologies available uh, for your project work in very brief manner and then you start your uh, methodology and explain it in detail such that if uh, any of your juniors or the readers want to redo your work for validation purposes and so on they should be able to read infer material from your methodology and they have to perform the experiments or simulations or the studies how or the way in which we have done it. so you simply categorize if you have uh, different uh, methodologies adapted in your research you have different subtopics like uh, theoretical methodology experimental methodology simulation methodology and so on each methodology can have its own uh, way of uh, say explaining uh, the thing which you have done like uh, if you have developed a particular uh, setup uh, you just explain uh, how the setup was developed what is the schematic what are the parts what are the speciality of the parts and uh, how it is procured or how it is manufactured and how it is assembled and so on uh, you explain the working procedure you explain about the say repetition of experiments or say about the accuracy of results and so on so uh, going to simulations uh, you can uh, mention about the geometry how you create your domain how did you mesh the domain and uh, how did you do your uh, 
mesh independent study or grid independent study what are the governing equations you use for uh, solving the problem and uh, you state about uh, uh, initial conditions boundary conditions and uh, say about the models which you have used the solution strategy or the procedure and how you post process and uh, save your results so this kind of information will be available to readers who will be able to say understand your um, working methodology and will be able to say redo the work for their validation or comparison purposes at the end of methodology chapter we can mention that uh, you have adapted these methodologies to perform studies on these particular uh, aspects for your project work and that can be referred to your uh, results and discussion chapter coming to results and discussion chapter i think uh, you have uh, two different ways of uh, writing results and discussion one is like you have a separate dedicated chapter for results and discussion like fourth chapter and then you have all the information uh, say inferred out of your project in the results and discussion chapter as multiple subdivisions this is one way to do the other way is like uh, you have different results and discussion chapters like you have different topics like all the subdivisions in the previous method uh, will be individual chapter here and each chapter will begin with uh, its own problem description and then the assumptions, the conditions, something like that. And then you can move into your results. You can put your pictures, graphs, and then uh, you can uh, describe uh, physics about it. Also, you can uh, say use uh, citations to refer that similar results were observed by people, uh, say reported in their papers or theses and so on. And uh, this will be uh, like uh, individual chapters uh, say for individual uh, papers suppose if you uh, write a uh, paper and then if you want to use the material as a resource and discussion and this will be uh, say useful here or if you want to use this material for writing a paper and if you have categorized or grouped into different topics if you have done various parametric studies and so on I think uh, each and individual chapter of your resource and discussion will become a paper once you have all the uh, results and discussion done, you can have a summary page for the results and discussion and the summary can uh, tell uh, what are the quantitative items and qualitative items in brief and uh, it will give a overall idea if people are not able to spend enough time reading your results and discussion. I think the summary page will give the say essence of the uh, work or essence of the physics uh, which you have inferred and then uh, you can uh, say uh, your conclusions in a separate chapter and that will have uh, say main conclusions derived out of your work where uh, you have defined your aim and scope of the work in the first two chapters and that will be uh, reflected here whether you have uh, say tar uh, whether you have achieved your target or not so this conclusion chapter will give uh, your overall idea and how to write is like the first paragraph you can uh, start writing about uh, a basic uh, introductory line about your project right uh, what you have done and what methodology you have adapted and what all you have observed the key observations are this and the key conclusions are this so you can have two to three uh, paragraphs in uh, conclusion and i think that will be uh, sufficient enough and you can move towards your uh, references in references i think you have to list down all the references which you have cited in your uh, literature review methodology analysis and discussion and so on uh, if you are writing uh, citations manually, it will become a tedious task. I will suggest here uh, you can use uh, mainly kind of uh, tools which will automate these process. So you can uh, use a mainly plugin in Word and uh, you can uh, cite the paper or book appropriately in phrases where mainly will uh, consolidate all this material and it will keep it in buffer. When you introduce insert bibliography in the references uh, part, uh, you can define the citation format or reference format i think mainly will give you the consolidated uh, list and it uh, say, say makes your uh, life easier suppose if you are changing uh, any of your citations in literature review after a revision or correction and mainly will appropriately uh, say revise the uh, references list you can uh, also have uh, some of the additional information 
uh, in terms of uh, appendix uh, say you can uh, give a program a code or uh, say something which is uh, peculiar to the work and which is not uh, in the main part of your uh, project report but uh, this is an additional information which can help uh, people uh, to use for their projects and uh, i think uh, you can go for multiple uh, appendix like appendix a b c so on like uh, computational people uh, say provide their major codes in one particular appendix and they give uh, say the information about their own uh, specific problem how they formulate it like a specific code for their problem and specific uh, utilities something like that in different one uh, some people uh, use appendix to describe uh, some of the uh, specific methodologies uh, for the instruments like uh, say particularly uh, calibration of a particular small device and so on and then finally you can have a separate page for uh, specific outcomes that you can mention all the outcomes that uh, came out of your project work like uh, conferences journals poster presentations yeah specific awards and so on so creating content for report and uh, say reporting it uh, is uh, one particular task the next major task is for you to check whether you are sticking to the template provided by your university or not you have to do it manually and then uh, if you want to find mistakes of your report i think you cannot do it so give it to your friends whether they know your work or not uh, they will be easily able to identify basic mistakes like typo grammar and so on so also you can automate this process uh, by using inbuilt uh, grammar check from word or by using uh, grammarly tools and then uh, once it is done i think you can ask your advisors to check uh, for plagiarism using turn it in or tools like that and uh, you can go for revisions you go for multiple iterations such that your report is uh, say refined and you have a perfect report for your submission all the best